road down the end of uh, Vanu Levu and that's Ramby Island on the left to start there, the tip of Ramby Island which is where we're headed I'll do it Some of the things wrong. What are the, some of the things, the manners that are important to know when you go to Ramby Island? Well, thanks very much, Grant. I think uh, when we talk about manners, they are, they are, we can set them up in categories. And I can say, yes, there'll be a general manner where everybody gets together. When I say general or categorize uh, manners, you know, because we are the people of, uh, we have a culture, we've got a custom tradition. And everything goes together with rituals and uh, spirit, spiritualism and all that. So everything involves. Yeah. So when I gonna split up like mannerism, when I say general, that is where everybody involves, like a, a gathering together where men and women get together, and we got manners to present at a time on that spot. When women are on their own and a men on their own, they got their own things to do. So <coughs> for this trip, if you're going to the island, and let's say we talk about general mannerism. Mannerism is very important. For example, if you two, if you see two people talking together, standing together talking, it is very important not to cut in between the eye contact of the two people talking. Because if you do that, that's bad manners. Because these people were talking and they were trying to explain things. And when you walk, so what you do, the best way to do, you have no way around it. First word to say, Kamataoninga, which is, excuse me. How, how did you say that? Kamataoninga. Kamataoninga. Yeah, Mataoninga. Mataoninga. Yeah, which is, okay. excuse me. And then you just go in between them, but less low, not as low as low, but as long as you don't cut their eye contact, that's okay. Mm. How did you say that again? Kamataoninga. 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 Kam. That's like kam, mata, mata, uninga, uninga. uninga. Ah, right. Okay. Kam mata uninga, which means excuse me. Right. And when you walk in, they are not offended because you have said the right word, <coughs> and you don't cut the eye contact. You're right. As if you not exist. You don't exist between right. them. Right. So no, <coughs> no offensive there. <coughs> Secondly, what is important. If you have a meeting there, like you are in, in a home and then you have this family gathering where all the family sit, lie down and have a conversation after dinner, it is very important that you don't walk over anybody or walk in across the circle where people are sitting together having a family conversation. Really? Yeah, okay. it is very, it's an honor. My stepdaughter, who is 16, every time she walk over me, I slap her leg. Totally, that's not on. And if you're going to do that, you've got so many space around, why don't you go around? Because to walk over somebody, 
it's just like death walking over you. Right. Now remember one thing, as I said before, <clears throat> especially for girls, and this is serious, women, you know, it is very, very important too. That's why women, are, it's very hard and men to walk over anybody's body because that is part of the culture. You know, for us, for men, for women to all walk over men and for men to look up between the legs, that's a no-no deal. Mm. So every time they walk, they, everybody like men and women, when they want to walk in between the conversation and all that, they take their own space and walk around. Even if I want to jump from here to there with these two feet, I'll have to take the long way and go there. And that's menace. To walk from here and walk over people, that's bad manners. Bad man. They won't allow it. And <clears throat> they might not say it, but it'll become part of the family conversation that you are not taught manners. Those are two of the most important things. And sometimes it's offensive because we can have a gathering. For example, we go to the island now and uh, we have a family gathering. Don't forget, in that family gathering where you're going to, there'll be elders, I know, male elders, female elders, moms and dads, aunties and uncle. And that is where the line of culture, cultural mannerism applies. You know who is who and what you should do. Mm -hmm. So those little things, are, even though they are small and they look silly, but it is a, the basic, uh, basic rule of our disciplinary actions within our culture. Mm. So those kind of things are very important. And uh, <clears throat> if, if uh, for example, if a woman, have a, no, if the girl got a, she need, need to attend to nature or anything, she talked to the elderly ladies or the young daughters. You know, women stuff with women stuff, men talk to the men. And that is important. It's a common thing among us. You know, it's a common thing that it's applies that way. As as long as you you know what you are applying, what what you are trying to explain, mm -hmm. and you you explain it in the right way, mm. and which angle. If it's women, you talk to the women itself. If men, you talk to the men itself. But in general, mannerism, those are the most important things. That's walking among the people, mm. walking over a cross, and one is important thing: don't touch people on the head. Don't touch people. No, here you pat people on the head. Yes. That's so, yeah, it's a, yeah, man. There, it's a no no. The children also? No, you can't touch them on the head. Okay. Because in, in our culture, the reason why I see this, the only things that touch our head are all our, um, like our cultural, like uh, ritual stuff. Mm -hmm. Like um, in the olden days, it's, it's, a, it's a custom, it's part of our manners. Mm. The only things that, that belongs to the, our, our spirits. You know, oh, God's worshipping and everything, like garlands and everything, mm -hmm. that goes on the head. Nothing else. Nothing else. No, nothing else. No, no, no hand. So no children, nothing. like small children, you don't. You don't pat them on the head. Pat them on the shoulders. Okay. That's a way to do it. On the shoulders. For many years. Yeah. Okay. You see, with my daughter and all that, they can come and slap me on the back. They no. never touch me on the head. No. They know that. Yeah. And they never do it. Right. And that's very important. Before we were talking about when you arrive, you were giving us a, 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 <laughs> yeah. a very good language lesson, I thought. And it was when, when you arrive on the, you know, start off the first thing, you, you've uh, we've just come in on a little 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 boat, you know, yeah, come yeah. over from uh, Karoka. Yeah. What would be the first words that people would need to know? Oh, the first word is, as usual, I think it's a common thing all over the world, the first thing is uh, the greetings. So, when you first meet with people who are going to meet you, it is your part as a visitor to say Kona Maori, singular. Kona, Kona Maori. Maori. That's one, that's singular. Kona Maori. Yeah, plural Kamna. Kamna Ma Maori. Kamna Maori is plural, more than one person to meet you. Kamna Maori. Yeah, that's plural. That's plural. So yeah. if they're getting off and there's, there's two or three people there, you Kamna Maori. Kamna Maori. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's a very good way to start. Then they're going to say to you, Kona Maori. Then they're going to ask you, Ante Aram, what's your name? What was Ante, again? Ante Aram. Aram. That's a question to Aram. you. Aram. Ante Aram. What is your name? And then you say, Oh, Grant. Well, yeah, yeah like that's your name. Ken. Then you can ask him, Ong Kami? Ong Kami. And you? Oh, you what's your name? Ah, uh, Ong Kami. Yeah. Oh, Ken, Tom, Joe, you know, so we introduce right. ourselves. Okay. So that is a very most important thing when you first meet up. Right. So, 
they might have a, a bit of conversation in English, bit of English, bit of Gilbati, so you get yes. on the boat. First thing when you get on the island, you meet people around, that's important. Come to Maori. Come wara. That's Come to Maori, which means hello. Yes. Come wara. Come wara. Which means how are you? Uh, and that is a common greeting to come people wara. around when you landed on the island. Come wara. Come wara. Oh, smarurung, which yeah. means we, we are well, we are well. How is that again? Smarurung. Sim. Merurung. Sim merurung. Yeah, that's one. Sim. Simerurung. 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 Yeah, and that's the answer you'll get back from the response, you know, the response from the people. Simerurung, we are well. Uh -huh. So that's when you walk in and you land on the island and you see people around you, and then that's what you ask them. Come water. Simerurung. Because we'll probably land just in front of the... That's right, and you, a lot of people will come and see you coming. Yes. And that's a problem. Island people, you know, oh, they uh, imatang coming in, so they'll be there to see. What was that word? Imatang. Imatang. What is an imatang? Imatang means European. The man from the land of matang. Matang. And what does matang mean? <laughs> Actually, matang is more of the old language in regard to the people from the east. So it's people from the east. Imatang. Okay. So because people who actually landed in the Pacific are people from the east, more of the fair skin. That's right. So fair skinned people are in Jordan this are all Imatang. So Imatang. whether they are Polynesians or whether they are Europeans, they're all fair skinned. So oh. they all call Imatang. Oh, call Imatang. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh that's very good. Yeah, so they are all called Imatang. So that's what that's what you'll be known. When you hear people say, Oh Te Matang, that means oh that's a European. How did you say that? Oh Te Matang. Oh the, the kids will say, Oh means like a word of expression. Yes. Oh Te Matang. Yeah. Oh, that's a European. Okay. And you, when you hear that, all you just say, hey, come to Maori. But what do you call Fijians? TBC. Ah, TBC. That's ah, a Fijian. Fijian. Yeah. Okay. That's TBC. And do Australians have a special name? Timatang. Timatang. Okay. <laughs> all Timatang. You all. Not Paratani? You don't have English? Don't make special word for English people. No, all white people are all Imatang. All Imatang. Whether you come from Australia, New Zealand, or Sofa, you are still Timatang. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It's, that's how they they don't classify Europeans. All Europeans. That's one word. So what would happen next? Would they? Would you say ask something like, "Where are you coming from? Or where are you going?" Yeah, they could. They, 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 if you walk on the road, for example, okay, you spend the night. Next morning, you get up and then you take want to take a walk to the jetty or to the post office or to the shop to get a a, gold, a Colgate or anything, yes. you know, soap. And people meet you on the road. Yeah. the little store next to the council chambers. Trade store really, just a typical sort of central store. And a car, just near the center of town here. thing they, you're gonna see them they, they'll be because people are happy people they're gonna giggle or you know, the kids are gonna mm. laugh and you know, they're gonna ask you Maori gonna Maori or Maori, Maori is, is yeah, good short enough. form yeah Maori, Maori. Okay. hello you know yeah. I said they gonna they might ask you Konara Konara where are you going Konara yeah Konara where are you going oh Nanako 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 Ntesito Ntesito Ah store I'm going to the shop Nanako ntesto. Nanako ntesto. Ntesto. Yes, is two. Nte. 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 
NTE. Na nako na nako I am going to the shop. Na nako nte store. I'm going to the shop. Okay. Yeah, or to the store. Na nako the store store. Yeah, same thing. So actually store English word we take it as store in yeah, all in sure. Gilpatis too. Sure. Yeah. So if you go and saying I'm going to the post office, it's the same thing. Na nako nte post office because people understand post office of anyway. Course. Yeah. Of so they see it. yeah. Then I go to office. So most of our uh, places like post office, uh, hospital, uh, shop, they, they, we, we use the English word for it. Primary school on the island here. of religion to the school. They're probably pretty similar for the whole place. Assembly of God, a little bit more than LDS or Mormons, and Baha'i, got six Catholics predominate. people understand when you say church uh nanako toman tapu toman tapu toman tapu is the holy house toman tapu toma toma means house toma and tapu means tabu ah, it's a sacred ah. house sacred house that's right okay and there's a mosque on the island branch of one in samambula School? No, that's Catholic school, Catholic church. They're the majority here. They certainly don't have the biggest church the Methodists do. A few kids playing out front. Some people in the Catholic compound. They were in the majority in the school, Catholics. It's up a small valley. Some hurricane damage. And the Methodist church the background. You can hear them cutting the grass here on the pitch. Right. Uh, if you want to shorten it up and say I'm going to I'm going to, to church, Nanako Ntani Mauri. Nanako Ntani Mauri. Ntani Mauri. Yeah, that's right. That's the one. Nanako Ntani Mauri. Tani Mauri is... is Tani Mauri, I'm going to pray. Ah, right. Oh, you're going to church. Mauri means health, I think, doesn't it? In taro Mauri. Yeah? Yeah, Taro Mauri means I'm going... The, more of the word Taro Mauri, it's just like a synonym in, in the going to church. Because when you say Taro Mauri, means I'm going to keep my health sacred. Right. <laughs> taro? Okay. Taro? Mauri. Taro. Mauri means your life, your health. health. Right. Taro means to bind it together more into sacred grounds. So I'm going to church. I'm going to put my, my life in a more secure spirit. That's how you explain it. So Taro Maori means I'm going to secure my spiritual life, mm. which is going to pray. Is it polite to ask people's ages? 
Oh yes, in our in our in our culture, ages doesn't matter because everybody knows everybody. I mean, yeah. But uh, yes, it is, is. You can ask uh, ages in regard to what you want to know. I mean. Uh, but if a student would a student be asked their age by someone there, how old they are? Oh, yeah, of course. How would they say? How would you ask that? Uh, Irawa, am diriki. How many years have you got? Irawa, am diriki. Am diriki. Ririki. Ririki. R I R I K I. Am diriki. Ririki. Ririki. Yeah. Am ririki. Yeah. And how would you reply? I'm eighteen. Oh, the we now know. The B no anua. The B means ten. Right. Anua means eight. Right. Okay. The B na anua. Ten and eight. Ten That's eighteen. That's right. <laughs> the B no anua. So more of the like na, just like plus. Yes. The B plus eight. The B na anua. It's just like French. Right? Yeah. It's what about uh, twenty? What is twenty? Wa pui. Wa pui. Wa pui. Yeah. And that means twenty. Twenty. Wa pui. Mm. Wa means wo wa. Two. Wa. Wa. Pui means ten. So two times ten. Ah, right. Wa. Okay. Pui. Two times ten. ten. Two times ten. Twenty. Wa pui. Okay. <laughs> wa. Wa wa. Which means where have you come? To wana wo wa ten wa. One, two, three. To wana wo wa. 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 Then you come to bui na. Ten. Wa bui. So two. 10, 20. Two tens are 20. So 30 would be 3. Teni pui. Teni pui. Yeah. Tenua. Tuana wa tenua. So te ni, which is 3. Yeah. Pui. So what is the word for one if you're counting? One. Tawana. Tawana. Yeah. Tawana. 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 That's one. Right. Okay. Wowa. Wowa. That's two. Wowa. That's two. Tenua. Tenua. That's three. Awa. Awa. Which is four. Four. Awa. Nimawa. 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 Five. Five. Onowa. Onowa. Six. Six. Isua. Isua. Seven. Isua. 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 Wanua. 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 Eight. Ruaiwa. Ru Iwa Ruaiwa Tuwewa Ru Ru A Iwa Ru Awe Ruaiwa 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 Nine Nine Tebina 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 Yeah, that's ten. That B is the B W. Yeah, because it's heavy. Because T E B W I N A B B Yeah. If you have the B. Because we have no P's, we don't have the Q's, we don't have the P's, we don't have the S, we don't, you know. Our alphabet starts from A, E, E, O, U, with this vowel. Kindergarten, just near the town centre. Then you go to the other ones, consonants, which are A, E, E, O, U, vowels. Mm, mm, p, k, r, c, w. Only twelve alphabets in our language. Dialect. Twelve. Twelve. Hmm. A, e, o, u. Five. Right. Vowels. Mm, mm, p, k, r, c, w. Seven consonants. That's it. Done. So when you see the B on its own, it's a light, like P. Sounds like P. P. Yeah, like a peanut. But really. Butter. That's when you have the B and the right. W. It's a really strong. Yeah, B. B. Okay. Parker. Oh, you know, what uh, can you say? Um, the Buina. Te Buina. Buina. The ten. B is heavy because you have the B W I. So it's a. It's become a, a B in 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 B. English alphabet. Right. When you say only one and you know on one P with no W, the P na. It's a light P. Ah, so with the B, with the W, it's heavy. With a single B, it's light. Okay. As in P, peanut. peanut. As in BW, it's like in B itself, like bomb, bomb, you know. So that's how they pronounce the P's in there. If somebody's thirsty, how would they ask for some water? Uh, 
you can say, you know, like a full short ten sentence, and you want to have a drink water, you can say, the yoka. Ikona ni moin teran. Can we have that again? The yoka. Ta yoka. Ikona. Ikona. Ni moin. Ni moin. Teran. 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 Yeah. Which means the yoka. Please. Ikona. Can I? Ni moin. Drink. Teran. Water. Teran. Teran. Teran is, Teran is the water. T stands for the all the time. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Ran means water. So you as when you say the yoka, you can run the run. As please, can I have some water? So that's this is where that's that's a shortest form you can ask for water. Yeah, tera. Mm. Tera. Or it's very abrupt. Huh? Yeah, you can, but you can make it shorter when you just say people un will understand, especially people you know. You, you just turn around and say the yoka, yeah, yeah, me run. Yeah, yeah, me run. Yeah, please, have you got water? Ah, right. So they know straight away. Yes. You know? That's what you wanted. Yeah, that's what I did for. But you have to be careful. Okay. Because you can ask water for anything. For washing. Washing your hand. Washing your hand. Or you want to put it down your collar because you're hot. Of course. Or you want to wash your face. Yes. But when you say, Tayoka, here, Miran, Namoi, then they know. Namoi. Yes, please, have you got water? Namoi. Drink. Right. Yeah. And th but that's the. That's the yeah, yeah. That's, one that's the where the expression is very important. Yeah. Because it, as you know, you know. Body language, you know, actions speak a lou louder than words, and people will pick it up. Now, the, obviously, there's a lot of things that people need to know. I know. And, um, and they're only there for a short time. So, for sure, they're going to make mistakes. How can you say, like, I'm sorry, or excuse me, or, yeah. you know, if you do something, you know. The very important word, when you know that you have a feeling that uh, it might be wrong. Right, even though it might be not, it's not right yeah, anyway. Yeah. You have a feeling, you know, because you can tell when you say something and people say, huh? Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. The, the very thing you can always say, it's a good thing to say, Kama kapara aupure. Kama? Kama? Kapara? Kapara? Aupure. Aupure. Will you please forgive me? Can you say that again? Kama? Kama? Kapara? Kapara? Aupure. 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 Yeah. Aupure. Yeah. yeah. In other words, you know, making it a simple right, you know, word to word meaning, it means, please, can you forgive my sins? Yes. You know, yeah. Aupure means sin. Aupure. My wrongdoings. Yes. Or whatever wrong you want to call it. Yeah. My errors. Yes. Yeah. And so that is very important. When you know I said, oh, kapa kapa aupure, which means you don't actually mean what you said before. Yeah. Or what you did before. It's, it's a mistake. misunderstanding. That's right. That's right. That's very So important. that's a key word to it. Kama kapa aupure, which means, please, forgive me for what happened. You yeah. know, I said something wrong. And then they'll help you to tell you what's wrong. And that's what people are, you know. Because, you know, you, you come from another culture. And when you say that, then they know straight away that you actually try to do the right thing, but you did wrong. Then they tell you how to do it. That's right. And that is where educational part of it comes in. Hmm. And it is very good. But How do you say thank you? Uh, singular? Korapa. Korapa. And thank you. Korapa. Korapa. Pro kamrapa, kamrapa. Ko singular, kam pro. Ah. Korapa. Korapa. Korapa grant. Right. Yeah, thank you, grant. Yeah. So, kam kamrapa. That means all of you. Yeah, yeah, two, three, four. Kamrapa. Or oh, if you wanna make it like um, you wanna make it into a proper, you know, uh, uh, way where you, you know, you really show appreciation, you can use the word kampasi. Kampasi rapa. Kampasi. Kampasi. Ndrapa. Ndrapa. Or oh, you can say Kopasi. Kopasi. Ndrapa. Rapa. Yeah, which is heaps of thanks to you. Ah, Kampasi. Pasi means plenty. Ah, but Kampasi. Yeah. Kopasi. Yeah, Kopasi Ndrapa means singular. Singular. Right. Kampasi Ndrapa when you talk to a multitude, more than one. Now we're going to be, it's very good luck, we're going to be on the island on a day that is both sad and happy. That's right. The 15th of December. That's true. This is the first landing place. 1946, when the Barnabans arrived here. Dumped here with a few tarps and no food. <laughs> Celebrations on the 15th of December, when they get together and 
celebrate, I suppose, their survival more than anything else, because they were just dumped here on this spot in 1945 on the 15th of December with only army tents. And what would be, how, how can we participate? How can we best uh, be with the people on that time? Okay, I think that is a very simple question, Grant. Because I got a solution in my mind already. Okay. Because when you go, and before the, the actual event happens, you'll be with families. Yes. And this is where you get more, most of your education. Because families, you're going to stay, they, they know how to speak English. Maybe the wife or both of them, the husband or their children, they know how to speak English. And this is where you learn from them. We came from across there. And this is one of the houses. The host family. And we're walking slightly inland up a small valley. There's Ken coming up the road from the little jetty. A river that goes up into the valley where Ken and his family live. Or a stream rather. And yes, there is a bus stop. It's a bus that runs between the extremes of the two villages. And this is one of the houses, cyclone replacement houses from the government of Fiji. You, what I'm saying here is all, you know, all basics, but when you go to homes, they'll come up with it in, from different angles and different aspects. Right. So what is most important that you know your family that you stay with, and you try to learn as much from them, you know, body language, things they say, and if you're in doubt, you ask them, just like what you've done to me. Right. Ken, what does this mean in your language? Yes. And they are very helpful, you know, they are there to help you to, to get educated. And in order to get involved, on that very important day, they'll tell you all. There are so many things that are going to happen. It's, you know, we're going to feel um, five tapes, we're going to do that. Yeah. But if you go there now and if you, you know, you can ask each individual student or all of us ask around, we get together on a day and then you come up, what are the points that the others miss? Right. Collect it together and then you have a full, full note of what's going to happen on the day and what, how you're going to do it. And that's your, the best way to do it when you get mixed up with your own families, get together and then share what you learn. And that will actually... But um, that's what I said, it's, it's, it's not hard. I mean, once you get, you get involved with the life on the island, it's just like a daily life back in Australia. I mean, once you know the... Um, so what you're saying is, uh, on one level, there is the general. In general. The general, mm -hmm. but that students should be that all of us, what well, students, me too, we should all be very uh, aware of the culture of the family. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and that, that, uh, maybe this is uh, what I should say this too because it is very important to the girls. This is nothing personal in regard to female or anything as in Western culture, mm. but uh, it is this is where we're going to we you're coming to a place where culture is a different story altogether from Western life. Mm. So for us, for for example, for for women, even men, to see, the, you know, sometimes you're gonna wear sarongs and all that. Yes. That's why you always are g girls or we are females or women when you go around town. As long, you know, you, here you walk around in bikinis. Who, who cares? Yes. This yes. is Western culture. That's right. Yeah, in there you will have to go around either with uh, sarongs, yes, with half tops, yes, and uh, or go around with shorts, board shorts. It's important. Board shorts. Yeah. As long as it's not bikinis, because that's, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, like uh, you don't show respect to the others. Right. Because don't forget, as I said before, in our culture, there are time for young men to be initiated to become 
I mean, young boys to be initiated to become men, mm. where they have a full contact and have a, that's where they start to, to, to see women as they are, and they, they take them as wife and they're part of family. And this is very important because people say, oh, that's a bit, you know, why, why would we women? No, but it, this shows the respect for women. We don't treat our women like anybody else. Mm. We give our women a respect. So no man have a right to look at another woman and indulge in it. It's a no-no. Now, you mentioned, uh, this is something that we spoke about before, the, the proper way of dressing is not only um, for women, it's also the men. That's right. Must be careful and respectful. Be careful, that's what I'm, so I was going, getting into that. Okay. Men too, when they wear the sarongs and all that, you know, we might laugh, you know. Go on. We might laugh at it and you might think it's a, but, you know, it become a talk of the village if the men walk around hanging loose. And they, what, what is he doing, you know? So you have to be. How? What is a? What would be appropriate dress? Oh, board shorts. Board shorts. A sort of civic centre here of all the services, plumbing, and youth, and the library. Songs. Go to Kmart and get some boards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think, but that's how we, uh, it's a different, uh, for example, if you go for our own venture, like we're going to do the, like a survival, bit of survival course, and that's, that's out of the village. And we, you know, you can do anything that you have in your swimming togs, you go for swimming, diving, because that's our own little thing where we all are. This is where I said it depends on where you are and what sort of, uh, you know, function or thing that you're doing. Either you're with a community, so that where customer applies. We're doing our own thing, our own culture applies. Because we are out of that, we go into a, a different spot, like on the other side of the island. Now, we do our own little thing that they can't come in. And because that's our own square now. Right. So even when they come in, they come and join our culture now. So it's a matter of respect in that kind of way, so. So when, um, for example, these, most of these people are young people, and they have an idea of a Pacific Island, and part of it is swimming. Yes. So when they are swimming, are there places near Nuka where you can swim? Yes, yeah, yeah we've got, we got a jetty there, we've got a wharf there where we always go swimming, just near to, we know that jetty where we landed, that's our swimming place and all that. That's swimming. Yeah, and uh, I would like to advise the, the students too, and all, all including the trip, that uh, Sometimes here you, you know, you can walk on the beach and all that, but back where we, back home where we're going to, you know, it's a common thing. There's people litter on the beach and all that. So just be careful, you know, don't just go on the beach and pick things up and you've got, you've got bottles and, you know, rubbish on the beach. So it might not happen. It, it, now it's a good thing, but just a precautious thing, you know. You know, what? No, don't throw rubbish on the beach. I, come again? Don't put rubbish on the beach. No, I would rather walking on the beach and picking shells and all that. You know, oh, yeah. especially in the populated area. Right. But where are we going? Like on the other side of the island, you know, where nobody lives there. You know, it's beautiful. Yeah. But then some kind of naughty kids, you know, can open cans and all. Just you know, broken bottles can be on the beach. Yes. And that's where people get injuries, injuries and all that. Be and, careful. Yeah, be careful about that. You know. So when swimming, what should what should men wear? What should the boys? Oh, board shorts. That that board will do. Shorts. Yeah, and they can wear the swimming thing just in the water and have a good swim. Okay. And they can have the, wear the swimming suit. When I'm talking about clothing, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. When I talk about clothing, when I talk about walking in the village, visiting people and all that, swimming, we know you guys swim in, in your togs and you know bikinis. Who cares? Yeah. That's the swimming. Yeah. There's not no restrictions there. You know. So the, the men, the boys, they should walk. They should always have a shirt on when they're walking. In oh, singlet. Singlet yes, is fine. Cool. Singlet is okay. Singlet is okay. Okay. But if, uh, for example, if you're gonna visit like a school or that, I'd rather we have a better, you know, like a yeah, better dressing. A shirt with a collar. Yeah, a shirt with a collar or, or t-shirt. Small campus here on the southern end of the island with quarters for staff because it's quite a ways from the main town. You get here by bus.
two or three buses a day. Doesn't matter. A t-shirt is okay? T-shirt is okay. For a church also? Yeah. I mean, t-shirt, going to church is a different thing. But now, coming to the church, people will, will understand where you come from. Right. So, they rather have you in church with a t-shirt on, where that you don't come at all. So, that's how they look at it. Because people will ask about that. Yeah. Because we'll be there for two Sundays. Huh? That's good. Yeah. That's good. People now, now we got a... Uh, don't forget that we already, we already have some... Uh, foreigners come to home and, they, and people are getting used to, to, to Imatangs already, so yes. there's no big deal about it. As, as long as we don't wear our boat, uh, our, our togs and bikinis to church, that's, that's, a, that's a different story. We'll have to put something on. You go, the girls going strong and tops and all that, that's okay. You know. What about hats? <coughs> hats? Hats outside? Yes, hat is not really a big issue with our culture. Only Fijian culture is different. But our culture, nah, head is, you they wear your head, you don't care. No. Especially when you, when you, uh, we don't wear hat when you have a dinner. Yes. Or you have a big family meeting, or mm -hmm. meeting because head too. But walking in, in, in the village and going visitation and all that, you can wear your head, no problem. Right. But when you walk in uh, somebody's house, do you, you, as in Australia, you take uh, your hat off. That's right. Yeah. We'll have to take your head off yeah. because why put your head on when you are sitting under the roof? You put a head on because you don't want the sun to get there. That's right. But once in your house, you take your shoes off and you take your head off. That's one important thing too. We don't wear shoes in the home. Ah, very important thing. Yeah, yes. That's right. That's right. Because uh, the reason why is that uh, we have a belief in the olden day that when you walk on the road, you know, the shoes, you step on anything on the road. Dead frogs, rubbish, you know, whatever you pick up. And you pick it up on the sole of your shoes. Yeah. And when you're walking into the house, of course. you're going to walk with the, all those rubbish. So, Now you're on television, Joanna.